My Fair Lady has reawakened, and she's sumptuous, fresh, and loverly enough to belie her 52 years. The taming of the shrewish Eliza Doolittle that unfolds to Lerner and Lowe music remains classic. But this revival, which originated in London's West End, has a deft contemporary sheen, never more evident than when Eliza arrives at the races. And this is where we meet Professor Higgins' mother, legendary Hollywood singer Marnie Nixon. I did the role many times in various different productions of Eliza. And now I've been kicked upstairs to do Mrs. Higgins. <laughs> Ascot is usually the one place I can come to with my friends and not run the risk of seeing my son Henry. What many people coming to the theater tonight don't realize is how Marnie Nixon fits into movie lore. That she is the voice behind many of our favorite movie musical numbers, starting with The King and I. Getting to know you, getting to know all about you. They sent me a black wax platter play here so I could hear the voice of, of Deborah Carr speaking voice and they said do you think you could make it a singing voice and I said yes so I came in and auditioned and they sent it to the, that audition to Richard Rogers and he approved and there I was at my first big uh, dubbing job. For weeks Nixon and Carr worked literally side by side so that Nixon could develop and dub the actress's singing voice, a process she repeated for Carr's one number in Affair to Remember. It's the speech pattern. You have to be aware of what you're hearing, the specifics of how the, the voice moves, the conformation of the face, and. You just imagine, I think. And then it's an acting exercise. In My Fair Lady, Nixon says Audrey Hepburn worked tirelessly to sing her own part, but simply didn't have the voice. With Audrey Hepburn, uh, she was uh, very cooperative and wanting to give me as much as she could. If her voice wasn't used, it was, it was like not my fault. It was, oh gosh, I didn't work hard enough or wish I could have done it better. She was very, very sweet, very conscientious. I could have spread my wings and done a thousand things. All of Nixon's work was desperately secretive. The studios clamped down on her, ironically silencing one of their most famous voices and leaving her terrified. They actually actually threatened me. They said if, if anybody ever found out that I did any part of Deborah Carr's voice, they would see to it that I would not work in town again. Can you imagine? Was there any contention between you and, say, Audrey Hepburn or you and Natalie? There was. Yes, um, not with Deborah Carr because it was accepted. Well, uh, with Natalie Wood, she just, you know, she, her ego couldn't take it. I feel pretty, oh so pretty, I feel pretty and witty and gay. In the West Side Story, Natalie Wood did not want to be dubbed except for a few high notes. And she recorded that whole picture to her own track. Then they threw that out and then I had to come back and, and dub in my voice, which is the hard way. A classical singer, Nixon found her adulation and adoration elsewhere, on the stage, as she does now in My Fair Lady. However, she does confess slightly that her secret is now among Hollywood's worst-kept ones. 